Hello parents and pupils of Year 13 and welcome to the Year 13 Parent Information Presentation. Usually we would invite you into school uh, for this event but uh, due to the ongoing pandemic unfortunately this cannot happen. I would like to begin this presentation by introducing myself. My name is Mr Young and I am the Head of Senior School and Mrs Peel is the Head of Year 13 and she will be your child's Head of Year until the summer of 2023 when uh, your son or daughter finish their time in senior school. During this presentation, I will be discussing A-level examinations and some of the main features of senior school, which would be different to uh, life in junior and middle school, before finishing with a focus on pastoral care. To begin with, as regards A-level examinations, it should be noted that pupils in senior school will be offered a curriculum in Grosvenor that facilitates the study of three subjects throughout each of these two years. It is therefore anticipated that the vast majority of pupils will study for three AS or BTEC qualifications in year 13 and three A2 or BTEC qualifications in year 14. As a result of this, the weekly timetable that pupils will follow in year 13 Will consist of nine periods per week for each of their AS subjects and in addition to this pupils will also be allocated two periods of games during periods 9 and 10 each Wednesday afternoon, four periods for the enrichment program, one period of careers and one period of general studies which takes place each Wednesday after break. In terms of this provision, a key consideration is that it prepares pupils as best as possible for higher education. This is particularly important given the overwhelming majority of Grover pupils go on to higher education at the end of year 14. In relation to general studies, for example, we invite a number of outside speakers from universities as well as various other organisations who speak to the pupils about different opportunities and pathways that may be available to them beyond Grosvenor and is thus seen as a very important feature of the senior school experience. The school's internal mock examinations will run from Monday the 29th of November to Friday the 3rd of December this year. In advance of the examinations, subject teachers will advise your child on topics that need to be revised. Following the marking and standardisation process, each teacher will write a report commenting on your child's academic progress and areas that require attention. The reports will be posted home in January and Mrs Peel and myself uh, will scrutinise the results and support will be offered to any pupil who may be struggling or who is underperforming. Whilst we hope that the AS examinations do take place as scheduled this year in May of 2022, um, it is worth also noting that pupils will return to school following the AS examinations for three weeks of work on their A2 uh, specification and that's from Monday the 6th of June to Friday the 24th of June so they will finish for the summer break about a week before the rest of the school uh, and then of course if the exams do go ahead next year uh, and your child is unhappy with the grade that they received uh, or they feel that they have not performed the best of their ability um, it is the following summer, June of year 14, before they have the opportunity to reset that module again, with the standard cost for resets tending to set at approximately £15 per module. Entry into year 14 from year 13 is not automatically guaranteed, and accordingly there is a set of criteria that pupils are expected to meet. Firstly, as you can see, pupils are expected to achieve a minimum of three grade Ds, or 32 points, in a system whereby an A equates to 20 points, a B to 16 points, a C to 12 points, a D to 10, and an E to 6. Secondly, pupils must also satisfy Dr. Vesey as regards their attitude and behaviour, and in this case it is imperative that they adhere to the high standards inspected, expected in Grosvenor at all times, and meet the expectations outlined in the senior school contract that they received at the beginning of year 13, which both they and you as parents were asked to sign. In terms of the, the team within senior school, as I said myself, I am the head of senior school, uh, but we have Mrs Peel who is head of year 13 and Mr Ledrum who is head of year 14, uh, and we all work closely uh, to ensure that uh, the pupils have the best experience of senior school that they can possibly have. A 
particularly important feature of senior school is this idea of independent study. And in this case, pupils in senior school are afforded a degree of responsibility in being trusted to work independently without the same level of supervision as they may have experienced at GCSE. In year 14, the pupils are trusted to work without any supervision whatsoever. In year 13, however, it is felt that some degree of supervision is still required and to this end an important role is played by the senior school study supervisor who is stationed in the year 13 library uh, and they play a very key role not just in supervising the pupils but also in encouraging them and providing structure and motivation for them in their studies. In addition to work carried out during independent study, it is also expected that all pupils should be studying around 12 hours a week outside uh, of school. It's not an arbitrary figure, but one that is based on years of experience of seeing pupils through their A-level studies. In years 13 and 14, it is much harder to cram for examinations, and so it is imperative that both independent study time and work carried out at home is maximised throughout the year. Finally, while it is of course important to work hard in senior school, there are always a number of pupils in any year group who, if anything, go too far above and beyond. And in such instances, it is worth a reminder that while work is important, it is also essential to have a balance between work and play, with the latter being important in order to alleviate the pressure and stress that inevitably comes with setting A-level examinations. Over the past years, couple of years, a particularly a prominent feature of Year 13 has been the implementation of the Enrichment Programme. Now, sadly, last year, with the tight restrictions uh, following a return to school after Lockdown 1, uh, the Enrichment Programme didn't really happen. But we are optimistic that it can happen this year. And as you can see from this slide, there are two aspects to the Enrichment Programme in its current guise. The compulsory element makes up two periods a week and runs over three blocks during the year. The first running from mid-September to mid-November and the second taking place from mid-November and early February and the third from early February until the end of April. As part of this element, pupils can this year choose between such options as interview techniques, leadership, online presence, presentation skills, study skills and word power in the workplace. But in terms of the optional element, meanwhile, this also makes up two periods a week and here pupils can select between the options such as young enterprise, leisure sports, Zumba, Chinese culture, basic Mandarin, cooking on a budget, touch typing to name some examples. Um, and again, uh, these are designed to allow the pupils just to breathe a little. As well as the enrichment program, a further feature of Year 13 is the work carried out in careers, or CEIAG, under the guidance of its head of department, Mrs Ray. Within this subject, the first number of months of the year are spent action planning, with pupils spending their time working out what they want to achieve from a career point of view, and then establishing what they need to do to give, that, give them the best chance of success. For example, what academic grades are they likely to require in order to be able uh, to pursue their desired pathway and how are they most likely to achieve these? In addition, what work experience would prove most beneficial to them in this pathway? As regards the area of work experience, this initiative will continue to be offered in a somewhat revised format. Many companies are offering the chance of virtual placements, for instance, with pupils able to engage through various online platforms. Likewise, some of these placements run, for example, only during the afternoons or evenings, and so the permitted three days absence from school may not be necessary in all cases. Due to the continued unprecedented nature of current circumstances, it's hard to be absolutely certain about the, uh, the options available with regard to work, sh work shadowing, uh, but pupils are encouraged to keep a very close eye on the Year 13 Careers Google Classroom, where more information will be provided in the coming weeks and months. Lastly, a very important final feature of the Year 13 Careers Programme is preparation for the UCAS application. It's completed early in Year 14, but the groundwork is carried out in the latter half of Year 13. In particular, this time is crucial uh, as pupils begin to draft and then move towards finalising the all-important personal statement that they will eventually send to universities. Again, the previously mentioned return to school in June is another time when important work is completed with regards to this.
One of the key aspects of senior school is the idea that it is a holistic experience. We regularly encourage all of our pupils to immerse themselves fully into the life of the school, as we believe a pupil who throws themselves into this ultimately has a happier and more fulfilling experience, which helps them achieve success in their examinations. This is especially the case in the senior school. A holistic, well-rounded experience of school will lead to happier and more content pupils who have a sense of pride in their school. This rich experience is important for successful outcomes for our pupils and is something we actively encourage. Of course, the most important aspect of senior school is the classroom. Over the years, we have managed our curriculum to ensure that on average, our class sizes are smaller in the senior school. This not only allows for focused learning and teaching, but it also allows for a closer working relationship to form between the teacher and pupil, which not only benefits the pupils here in Grosvenor, but has the dual purpose of preparing them for life beyond A-levels. We've, we've already mentioned the benefits of the General Studies Programme and the Enrichment Programme, but I want to further touch upon the Enrichment Programme. One of the key reasons for developing this was to ensure that our pupils are equipped with the necessary skills for life beyond Grosvenor, skills which employers and universities were telling us this generation was lacking. Meanwhile, the optional elements allow the pupils to breathe a little when studying at A-level. This dual, balanced approach is important in giving the pupils the perfect springboard to success at A-level, whilst also develop developing them into confident and upstanding young adults, ready for the challenges they face when they leave school. The extracurricular life of the school and indeed voluntary service and Habitat for Humanity, two excellent opportunities afforded to our senior school pupils, were significantly impacted last year, but we hope to see them make a full return this year. The point of contact for voluntary service is Mrs Dorman. Pupils are allowed to opt out of senior games on a Wednesday and volunteer locally with local homework clubs and charity shops, to name two examples. The point of contact for Habitat for Humanity is Mrs Brown. We've already mentioned Mrs Ray as head of the CEIAG department and she is of course the main point of contact for all careers related queries. I can't emphasise enough the importance of your son or daughter accessing their careers Google Classroom and keeping abreast of the weekly notices. These come regularly from Mrs Ray as and when careers information is shared with her. As parents you will also get some of this information emailed out monthly in her monthly careers letter. A close eye on both of these is highly recommended. In concluding this slide, life in the senior school is different to that of middle and junior school. It promises to be a deeply rewarding two years for the pupils, and it is this holistic experience which makes it so worthwhile. So I encourage the pupils to get stuck in, throw themselves into all of the opportunities, and use the two years as a springboard onto your chosen pathway beyond Grosvenor. One of the main obstacles to success at senior school is poor attendance. This slide, kindly put together by Mrs Fox, who is the senior teacher in charge of attendance, demonstrates the significant impact of missing school. Good attendance at school leads to good outcomes. Pupils in senior school can also avail of the Educational Maintenance Allowance, or EMA. Further information on the EMA can be found in the common room pigeonholes, particularly with respect to whether uh, your son or daughter is eligible to receive the payments. Uh, but any pupils who are eligible should apply as soon as possible. There are a number of other common pitfalls in senior school beyond just uh, poor attendance. It is very important that the pupils have a good attitude right from the start of the year, uh, particularly with res respect to the step up to advanced level study. Um, at GCSE, it, it is slightly different because you're managing uh, a greater number of subjects, whereas obviously things are much more focused at A-level but the workload is much greater, much heavier in terms of the content. So pupils need to have a good attitude to their work right from the start of the year and make effective use of independent study. Um, the other uh, points about time management and organisation are all linked to this, of course. If pupils manage their time effectively and balance all of, the various, uh, all of their various commitments and are organised, then they're in a good place to do well over the course of the year. Part-time jobs is an area that um, it, it, we wouldn't recommend that the pupils have part-time jobs. Um, e the EMA is there to help if necessary, if anybody uh, needs the finances, but part-time jobs 
uh, or they lead to a very tricky uh, balance between the, the pupils' studies and the need to uh, to work outside of the, the classroom. So we would we wouldn't recommend that pupils do that. I suppose the, the most important point in all of this slide is just when pupils underestimate the rigors of A-level study, particularly coming from GCSE. As I say, it is slightly different where you're balancing. It's, it's more the number of subjects that you're balancing. And pupils, whenever they move to A-level, they think, well, maybe only three subjects to focus on here. If I cope well at GCSE, I'll be fine. And then maybe at two, three, four, five months into their uh, AS year, they're struggling. The pupils have to, to, to understand that A-level study is significant in terms of the quantity uh, and the depth uh, to, of material that is studied. And not only that, the pace, uh, the pace of the, the study um, is relentless. And it's very important that the pupils stay on top of that. Because if they stay on top of that, they'll feel in a better place to cope. Whereas if they start to fall behind, that can lead to problems. So it's very important that they have a good attitude and they recognise that A-level study is very difficult and they need to give it their full attention. In terms of the pastoral care and the support that's on offer uh, at senior school, it's pretty similar to, to other years. The subject teachers are the specialists. They should be the first point of contact for the pupils whenever they're struggling in any of their subjects. If there's any matters that um, are important that need to be raised that are beyond the subject areas, the form tutor is that first point of contact uh, as, as a pastoral support. And the form tutor sees the pupils every morning and builds up a very good rapport with the pupils so that there is a natural relationship there should uh, the pupil want to, to bring anything to the attention of the form tutor. Um, issues that are maybe of a more serious nature or, or more sensitive nature uh, should come to the head of year uh, and perhaps even to myself as head of senior school. Uh, as always, there is school counselling available. Uh, Mrs Caulfield uh, provides that service within school uh, and the pupils can avail of that at any time. Uh, if, however, they would prefer to speak to an outside counsellor, we do have new life counselling who come in for a day and a half a week uh, and the pupils can speak to one of, uh, one of those counsellors. It's all very discreet uh, and it's just a further avenue of support uh, to help the pupils if necessary. In conclusion then, uh, both uh, Mr Landrum, Mrs Peel and myself, uh, the, the senior school team if you like, we're very passionate about ensuring that the pupils have the best experience that they can possibly have in their final two years of school. We want them to enjoy it, we want them to get the best out of it, but ultimately we want them to have success and a, a really good springboard to wherever they decide to go, whether that be um, university or a high level apprenticeship, uh, wherever uh, they go after school, we want them to have enjoyed their final two years and be ready and equipped for whatever challenges they may face beyond school. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Speak to either Mrs Peel or myself uh, and we'll be only too happy to help. Um, and that goes for following this presentation and indeed throughout the course of this academic year. And finally, we wish the pupils all the very best for their final two years with us in Grosvenor.